One of the big questions on people's minds since the February announcement of the remaining 100 candidates in Mars One's astronaut selection process was how exactly they will be whittled down to the final 24 that will enter full-time training for the mission. Well, this month, I can share more information about this with you following a new article published in Inside 360 by Mars One's Chief Medical Officer and Head of their Crew Selection Programme, Dr Norbert Kraft. I'll be summarising this article in just a moment, but first though, you'll remember that last month I mentioned there will be six new replacement candidates going into the Mars 100. Well, Mars One have now revealed their identities. Dr Bupendra Singh, a physicist from India, Yuri Lopez, a IT analyst from Uruguay, Steve Mina, a computer scientist from Ireland, along with mechanical and aerospace engineer Hampton Black, military man Robert Daniel Golden, and finally commercial spaceflight professional Kelly Girardi, all from the United States. The next rounds of the selection process will begin with the 100 candidates gathering in a single location, where we will then self-select ourselves into 6 to 10 teams of between 10 and 15 people in each, based on compatibility scores formulated from psychological and habitual questionnaires issued in the months leading up to the gathering. Now, maximal diversity will be encouraged in each group, in terms of age, ethnicity and nationality, as well as mandating a 50-50 male-to-female ratio in each team. The groups will then go through a series of challenges after a study period relating to each challenge. The selection committee will then look over all the evidence from each group's performance, assess their organisational skills, their unique approach to the challenge, as well as their conflict resolution strategy, and based on all this they will then debrief the candidates. Overall, this part of the selection process will last for five days in total, during which 10 to 20 candidates will be selected out during each day, leaving ultimately 40 candidates who will then proceed to the isolation stage. These candidates will then spend nine days in an isolation unit, where they will be observed as they prepare for the final team challenges, which will also include tests to examine each candidate's learning strategy, which is vital knowledge to learn in order to formulate the technical education that each candidate selected for training will have to go through. So the isolation experiments overall select 30 candidates who will then proceed to the final test in the selection process, the Mars Settler Suitability Interview. This final hurdle is designed to measure each candidate's suitability for long duration space flight and ultimately human settlement on Mars. For instance, it will measure each candidate's teamwork and group living skills, their motivations, family skills, how they deal with stress, and also, very importantly, examine their decision making process. Each of these interviews will last for around four hours and will be recorded so that the selection committee can then analyse their performance and use it as the basis to select the final 24 who will then be offered full-time employment contracts to train for the mission. Now, a natural question to ask is where and when this process will take place. Although there hasn't been an official announcement yet of where the simulation outpost site will be located, what I can say is that Mars One CEO has recently, just this past month, been in South Iceland examining potential isolated locations for the outpost to be constructed at, some of which you can see here. I will of course keep you up to date with any further developments and news as they come in about the project's development. Naturally, construction of this outpost will take time though, so I can now reveal that the final rounds of the selection process will take place in September 2016. This is of course later than originally planned, but I for one am really pleased that now finally the dates are locked into place and agreed upon with all of the remaining candidates. With the conclusion of the selection process being just over a year away, this has afforded increased opportunities to plan candidate meetups over the coming months in order to better formulate our teams. Over the past month, Australian candidate Diane McGrath came to visit the UK, where she met up with both myself and UK candidate Alison Rigby. Whilst here, I took the liberty to record a short conversation about Mars One with Diane, which you can check out over here and down below. There was also a meetup over the Atlantic at SpaceX's headquarters over in California, which included a lovely group tour of the facilities. But the big opportunity is still to come though in just over a week's time at the Mars Society Convention in Washington DC. The Mars Society Convention will certainly be an interesting one for Mars One, as in addition to a presentation by the CEO Baz Lansdor, there will be a panel discussion involving some of the American Mars 100 candidates, and finally the highlight 
a debate on the feasibility of Mars One, featuring two of the MIT PhD student authors of last October's feasibility study examining the project. I for one am really excited about this long overdue debate and about the convention in general, both of which will be available to view online. I'll also be at the convention myself in order to meet some of my fellow candidates over from the States, and who knows, maybe I'll take the opportunity to gather some behind the scenes footage for you. Finally, with regards to what I've been up to this past month, I would like to give a special shout out to St Giles Academy in Lincoln, a school I visited a few weeks ago that's been spending the last few months working on a Living on Mars exhibition inspired by Mars One. Now, their project work was seriously impressive. It included a study on how reduced gravity affects the human body, they built models of the Mars outpost itself, as well as filming their own application videos. In fact, I was so impressed by the creativity in their application videos that I finally decided to get around to updating, basically, my own application video that I made way back in 2012 with a new compilation video. I've just uploaded that to my Mars One profile, and if you want to check it out, I'll certainly post a link to that down in the description below, and I would love your feedback on that new video. And before I sign off, I'm pleased to say that I've now graduated from Oxford University with a first class honours master's degree in physics. Now I'll be moving to Cambridge in September in order to begin a PhD at the Institute of Astronomy, where I plan to undertake research in exoplanets. Exciting stuff! Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, I produce Mars One mission updates around the end of each month, just like this one, as well as content on human spaceflight and planetary science. This month's feature video is a mini documentary exploring Canadian Mars One candidate Karen Cummings' involvement with the project. Next up, I'll be releasing a video later this week examining the scientific and wider implications of last month's Pluto flyby. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it.